Okay. I would like to uh, talk a bit about rituals and how to use ritual spaces. Ritual spaces are used for healing and the first type of space I want to discuss is the circle. When we are creating a ritual space there are a few things which are of importance. First of all is that we in a way define an outside and an inside so that the inside of the ritual space will hold a different energy in, will in a way be a different part of the cosmos it is as if you're traveling from our world into another world to define the space with a circle is quite easy you just draw a round circle and the space within is your magical space, your healing space. A shape is also of interest and of influence if you are performing a ritual. Uh, the circle is one of the nicest shapes to use because the circle itself is also a symbol and symbols have a certain value in the higher world. They show your intention, they show what you desire so that other powers, higher powers, can get involved and help you. And the circle can be seen as being a movement, a circular movement. So it can mean that it is unending. It can also mean there is a harmony, there is a balance. There is no left, there is no right, there is no corners. Everything is equal, equidistant. So the symbol is also a good um, form if you want to have people participate in a form of equality, in a form of sharing. Sometimes if you use the circle, in the heart of the circle an object is placed. This can be a point, this can be uh, an image of a deity, it can be a point of light. Uh, such as a fire or a candle. When the circle does have a point, you create a very different mechanic within the circle. Usually if you use a circle, then you use the edge of the circle to, in a way, uh, round the energies which are inside. So it is really only the circle itself which is active, just containing whatever is within. So it acts as an isolation and as a harmonizer. If you have just a circle, then only the edge of the circle is active energetically. It acts like a ward, keeping things outside, and it acts like a harmonizer, a conductor of energies. So the energies tend to circle around and harmonize themselves and connect all the objects and points on the circle, and all the people on the circle. As soon as you place something within the circle though, you get a very different dynamic. The circle in a way turns into a torus. As the energy comes out of the center, it bounces off the edge and returns to the center, and then you get a flow of energy going outside, inside, outside, inside, and this way a ring of energy is created with in a, way, in a point of initiation and return. So then the ring is not just a ring on a more horizontal level but also more on a vertical level of energies circulating in that manner. Um, if you do that and also the effect of the circle becomes slightly different uh, because uh, if you use only the circle it just contains the energy and harmonizes it but as soon as you add a heart to the circle then generally the space starts to charge itself because the energy which is generated from the center cannot escape and with every iteration it adds to itself and so slowly but surely the circle will get uh, 
more and more charged, will gain in strength. Um, you can also work with the energy in the circle to harness this rhythm, this transformation of energy. For instance, you can use drums or movements or rattles so that the energy goes in, goes out, goes in, goes out, goes in, goes out, goes in, goes out. And this way the energy starts to reverberate in a circle with a certain rhythm. And with every new pulse, the circle starts to charge itself and become more and more strong. You can also um, use um, wind instruments or singing bowls like flutes um, or um, other things to alter the vibration. So instead of wanting to increase the energy of the, of the circle, in a way go into a higher and higher pitch and every time you do that you go into you make the energy more ethereal more high always all the way onto the astral the longer you work with the circle so in a way you usually start the sounds relatively low and then you make them higher and higher in a way to build the circle into a cone into a something which is reaching towards the higher worlds, towards the higher elements, as the energy in the circle doesn't become merely stronger, but also of a higher vibration. So if you use the singing bowls or the other uh, wind instruments like flutes, um, then generally you use it also to reach out as a group. You want to invite a higher power to share with you, to be with you. And often this is also combined with the use of fire in the center. Because fire is also the symbol of the higher power, the higher elements, the power of transformation, the power of divinity, which you're looking for. And if, on the contrary, you tend to use rattles and drums or stamping or voices like hoo, 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 then you're more charging the circle with lower energy. But these lower energies can then be transformed more towards the center so that the center reaches up and that the energy coming out of the center becomes of a higher and higher vibration and ultimately will pull up the energies of everybody and everything within the circle. What is also very important is that the circle is unbroken. Um, as a symbol, by an unbroken circle you're showing that the energy should be con contained, should be maintained there. But as soon as you cut the circle, you break the circle, you're in a way saying to the higher world, to your guides, to whatever spirits might be watching, it is finished. The energy should be released now. We're done. Um, so people halfway the ritual, going to the toilet, going to answer the doorbell or things like this. It's not something to be done if you're using a circle. Um, so if you create a circle of people and um, a person has to leave, then that person, when holding hands, should join the hands of the neighbors. And once the circle has been rejoined, then the person can move out. But never should the person just let go of the hands and walk out because then at the same time the spirits will leave and the energy will, uh, will leave and also the harmonizing influence of the circle will also be broken. And it can take quite a while that if a person does inadvertently leave in a way that it breaks the circle for the energy to recover again. So easily four to five minutes before you're in a way back to the level as before the person let go of their hand. So the effect of a little disturbance can be quite strong if you're using a circle. So that's something to be cautious of. So adding to the circle is in a way much easier. You can, um, the person who are waiting from the outside, for instance, if not everybody is there, one person elects to stay out of the circle to open the door, 
when everybody is there they can rejoin the circle by the way just taking the hands of the people in the circle and inserting themselves into it. Also then you find that the new people inserted in the circle won't have the same vibration but because the energy is moving around they yeah, catch up quite quickly and usually within two minutes the energy is yeah, uh, already fine, they're, they're a full part of the circle but also while they're integrating the circle keeps on continuing strength while um, if a person actually leaves then it loses strength and has to build up to the same level again another thing why it is important not to break the circle is also that um, certain spirits are attracted to, um, to energies and if you have an enclosed space build up the energy and if energy is leaking out that means that spirits can also um, feed on it not just from the outside but also to go into your ritual space and try to feed on the energy there or even to control the energy there so that the energy in your healing space might become very different from what you would desire what is ideal is if that's before adding a person to the circle you can harmonize them, you can clean them a little bit um, for instance with a small meditation or at least a small cleansing of the aura so that the person yeah, doesn't risk bringing the wrong things within the ritual space as I said the circles are one of the more robust forms of ritual space because there's a harmonizing effect it's not the same as a real cleansing effect, but minor impurities, minor problems get compensated by using the circle form. So it is one of the safest forms also to use in your rituals. Thank you for paying attention and please also watch the other videos on the other forms we can use in creating a ritual space for healing.